Hi everyone, it's Chloe from Chloe's Creative Cards and I've got another tutorial for you today. So this is one that I've been asked so many times for and it is how do I tie my bows? So basically I have raked through my ribbon box um, in my craft room and I'm going to show you lots of different ways as to how you can tie your bows today. But not only am I going to show you that, I'm also going to teach you how to make a project as well. So we're going to be using the geometric background stamp, which is one of the new ones. We're going to line that up to create a background. And we're also going to be using the happy birthday stamp from the happy birthday stamp and die set. Okay then, so my bows, I don't have a like a bow tying tool or anything like that. I just tend to tie them on my hands and on my fingers. There is a little bit of a knack to it, but honestly, if you just practice, you will be absolutely away with it. It is so, so easy. Okay then, so this is the, the bow that um, I like to tie. So I tend to do a triple bow and that depends on the thickness of the ribbon that I'm using. If I'm using a thinner ribbon, I tend to do just, um, I do the three loops. If I'm using quite a thick ribbon, I tend to use um, just two loops. Sometimes I use three, it depends what look I'm going for, to be honest. So to get started, I've got a bit of ribbon here. Okay. So this is a sheer ribbon. So this is quite a, it's, it's like a, about how, I wonder how wide this is. I wonder if I can just measure it on my guillotine. So this particular one's about half an inch thick, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to take your ribbon. I tend to leave mine on the roll as well, then it's less wastage. You're going to loop it round your index finger. Now I am left-handed for anyone who's watching. Um, so I do tie this on my left hand, okay? I'm a little bit weird. I write with my right hand and cut and do things with my left hand, so a bit strange. But anyway, I'm going to tie mine on my left hand. So I've looped my ribbon round my index finger, and that's the starting point, okay? You're then going to take your longer length of ribbon. So this is the piece that's at the back, okay? Can you see that? So it's come through here. You're going to loop that round your third finger like a figure of eight. So you're literally creating a loop round your finger. You're then going to take it back around your index finger like so but you're wrapping it all the way around can you see that at the back and then you're going to do exactly the same again okay back around your third finger so that will create a double bow because we've got two loops on those fingers to create a triple bow you're going to do that once more so again you're always wrapping all the way around so you're going from the back to the front then you're going to take your longer length okay and what i tend to do is grab that with my thumb at the back there so i'm crossing it all the way over these ribbons here. I'm then going to take this shorter length, so this is the bit that we first started with, and we're going to take that round and take it all the way to the front, and then we're going to tie a knot. Okay, and then when you pull that off your fingers, you want to tie that knot quite tight as well. The problem that I see a lot of people doing is they leave the knot too loose. You want to tie it nice and tight. Sometimes as well, I have to say, I've done that very nicely with my hands today. Sometimes I do kind of grab it with my teeth and then pull it. And it gives you that nice, that nice tight knot. So then you get the ruching in the middle of the ribbon. So once you pull that off of your fingers... You then get these beautiful little bows that are perfect for using on all of your projects. So that's one type that I tie. So that's using the sheer ribbon and that's about half an inch thick. Now, the one that I think kind of set everyone off wanting to do this technique was when I tied it with wired ribbon. Okay, and unfortunately, this is some ribbon that we did use to sell. But basically, can you sell it's got this like iridescent thread running through? The manufacturer has discontinued the thread and we can't get any more because we had we literally bought everything that they had um at the time so it has all gone now i'm afraid but we do have a little sneak peek probably shouldn't say this we've got some um awesome new ribbons coming very very soon that i'm sure you are all going to love and they tie incredible bows okay so we're going to start again so we're going to hang the ribbon round our index finger like so. And what you'll find again with your wired ribbon is it's going to hold the shape really nicely. So you can see how I've created a loop around my index finger there. Okay. I'm then going to take the long bit. So this is the bit that's like at the back. I'm going to loop it all the way around my third finger. Okay. I'm going to loop it all the way back around my first finger. So you're like going from back to front. Then you're going to loop it back around your third finger, but you're going all the way. Can you see how it's like a figure of eight? That makes sense. There we go. Can we see that there? Okay. And then we're going to loop it 
back round my first finger again and then all the way back round your third finger and by doing it in this figure of eight way you get really nice loops to your ribbons so what we're then going to do is take this longer length okay so this is the length that we've been wrapping round with we're going to cross it over so you need to cross it over all of those loops and you also need to cross it over the shorter piece as well so this is the piece that we started with hanging over you're then going to grab that with your thumb you're going to take the shorter piece you're going to wrap it all the way around all of those layers can you see and then tuck it down the back like so okay so you can see how that's now peeping around the back there we're going to pull that through and then we're going to tie your knot Again. and then you can see when you pull this off your fingers how you've then got that lovely bow okay so that's the one with the wired ribbon so then you can see how because it's wired it's going to hold the loop in the the loops in place there now another type of ribbon that i've been using a lot recently is like a really really fine organza type ribbon so this is like really, it's like three mil, it's really, really thin. So what I tend to do when I tie bows with this one is it's the same technique again. So you're always starting by hanging it around your index finger. You're then going to wrap it all the way around your third finger, all the way around your index finger. So again, can you see that figure of eight in the middle? That's the really important part. All the way around your third back around the index finger, back around your third. So that would then be a triple bow. But because this ribbon is really, really fine, I tend to do it like an extra twice, like so. Okay, so you can see how we've got all those loops there. That's actually quite a good angle to show you there. And then we're going to take this long length again. You're going to grab it with your thumb. You want to keep the shorter length underneath. You're going to take the shorter length all the way back round. Like so. And then you're going to grab it all and I tend to give it like a real quite a tight pull. You want to make sure that that knot's really nice and tight because if it's not, your loops are going to slip out. And as well, you don't want it to, you want it to really gather nicely in the middle. And that makes such a difference to your projects. It'll, honestly, it'll make your cards look more professional. Okay, so we're going to tie that nice and tight in the middle. Like so. And then when you pull that off your fingers... Because this is like a sheer ribbon, it's not that easy to kind of organise, but you can then pull the little loops out and then you've got your, your bow with your five loops there. Okay, so that's another type that you can do. And then one more, I'm going to grab some, um, some quite thick ribbon to show you how to tie them with okay so this ribbon that i've got here is like a silky crush ribbon so this is about one inch thick so because this is quite a thick ribbon i'd probably only do a double bow with this so to do that i'm going to hang it over my index finger again we're starting in exactly the same way so once you've learned the technique seriously sit and practice that's what i did when i taught myself how to do this once you've learned the technique you'll be away you'll be able to tie as many bows as you like then so what you're going to do hang it around your index finger Take your longer length, okay? You're going to wrap it around your third finger, okay? Like so. Back around your index finger, but you're always wrapping all the way around to create this figure of eight. Then back around your third finger. You're going to grab this long length, cross it over at the back so the shorter length's underneath. You're going to take that short length and then you're going to tuck it all the way around to the back. And then you're going to tie that in a knot. Again, I always like to give it a bit of a tug just to make sure that that ribbon's gathering in the middle. Because honestly, that makes such a difference to your project. So then you can shuffle that along a little bit. Take that off your fingers. And that would be your lovely bow ready to go there. Okay, but you can see by you really want to get that knot nice and tight in the centre. That is kind of the key part, I would say okay so now i've shown you that little bit we're going to create a card using a big bow because i've created these styles of cards for years and i love them i did um, a load at christmas one year actually and they're great to do with your pattern papers but i thought we've got this gorgeous geometric background stamp so we'll use that and we'll do a little bit of stamping and embossing so what we're going to do to start with is i've got some of our rose quartz pearl card here i'm going to give it a dust with my anti-static bag 
just want to give that a good dust over and then we're going to take our stamp so this is our geometric background stamp so it's a really nice large image i'm going to stand up when i stamp this one because i tend to find that a bit easier you're going to take your ink pad so i'm using the wow clear embossing ink pad which is this one here okay i'm going to ink up my image so i'm making sure that i'm getting plenty of ink onto that stamp Okay, and then I'm going to place this down onto my card and we're going to press. So we'll bring our card in here. We're going to hover down and then press. So you want firm, even pressure all over the stamp when you're stamping this. Okay. And then we're going to lift that off. You can see we've got a lovely, nice, clean image there. It might be a little bit difficult for you to see at home, but I can definitely see that we've got that image stamped. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some more opaque, bright white, super fine embossing powder. And I'm going to sprinkle this over the top. And this is a really nice, bright white embossing powder. Okay. So I'm going to sprinkle that over. It's going to give it a nice, clean look. I'm going to pop this back into the jar. So, and then we're going to heat up our background there. So I've got my heat gun here. Mine's a dual speed one. So I just tend to go in at the highest setting. You're literally going to hold your heat gun still. And then as soon as you see that powder start to melt and change, you can see it's starting to go to a lovely bright white. You're going to move your heat gun over the image. So all we're doing is we're just chafing that embossing powder. And making sure that we've got that all nicely heated up. Okay. So what we're now going to do for lining this up, just I missed a little bit of embossing there, sorry guys. You can always just go back in with your heat gun if you have as well. There we go. Okay, so we're going to line this stamp up now to create a repetitive background because that is how this stamp has been designed. So you can use this in lots of different ways. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my anti-static bag, give my card. I've just over again and i always do that every single time before i reline one of these stamps up just to make sure i've got no fingerprints on there so i'm going to take my stamp i'm going to re-ink it with my clear embossing ink pad make sure you've got plenty of ink on there Okay, then what I'm going to do is bring in my card. I'm going to, I find it easier standing up as well. I'm going to hover over the top. And then can you just see how I'm looking at where the little kind of cubes are going to touch? And I'm just making sure that they are just, say, touching. I don't think they are there. We're in a little bit of a weird angle here because I've got my arm wrapped around, <laughs> wrapped around the camera. <laughs> To be able to show you all at home but hopefully we should have that nicely lined up so again firm even pressure all over the stamp and then we're going to lift this off oh that looks pretty perfect to me i have to say so what we're then going to do is take our opaque bright white super fine embossing powder again sprinkle that over the top and then tap off the excess like so. Oh, I've spilt some of that onto my desk there. Oh no. Okay. Let me just dust that off. There we go. Right. So what we're then going to do is heat up where we've just stamped. Okay. So again, holding my heat gun still. And you can see 
how we've now created this completely seamless pattern using the stamps. So just by continuing to line the design up, you can see how beautiful this then looks. Okay, and if I just hold that up, you can see there that you cannot see the join in that design. But it's so easy to do. What I would recommend is if you're not if you're not quite as confident, what I would do is I would get some scrap paper. Even just use a coloured ink pad if you want to and just have a little bit of a practice lining up because honestly, once you've kind of done it you, and your eyes kind of looking at the right place, you're away then, okay? And it's the same concept for any of our stamps. So what I tend to do is just overlap. Maybe use a little bit of the image sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to re-ink the geometric background again. Okay, and then we're going to place this down onto our card once more. So again, I'm looking at these little points that we've got here. And I'm just trying to overlap those. So if you're looking directly over your stamp as well, that will also help you a lot. Looks about right there to me. So then we're just going to press... And then lift that off. Okay. Grabbing our white embossing powder again. Tap off the excess and you can see how perfectly that's then lined up again. So pop that back into the jar. Finish with the white now. I'm going to use my heat gun again just to heat this up. So you can see how I'm just like chasing the embossing powder. As soon as that embossing powder melts and changes, I'm just moving my heat gun over the image. So, and that's my background all nicely lined up ready for this project so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my guillotine okay and I'm going to trim this down into a square so I always just tend to wear it around and trim all of my edges off to start with I'm going to trim this down to seven inches I want it to be. Put that bit off there. I'm going to save that for another project because we can use that on another card. And then I'm going to cut this to seven there. Okay. So you can see how I've now got that all trimmed down, ready to go. And that's what I tend to do. I tend to start out with a larger background and then trim it down. Okay, so we've got choices now with the ribbon. So I think we'll use this pink one okay and i'm going to use this pink sheer bow that i tied at the beginning as well and you'll notice how i'm cutting my ribbons off at an angle there that'll just help to stop the edges from fraying okay so what we're going to do is like wrap this up like a parcel so I'm going to put, oops, a bit of ribbon there there they were my um foam pad cutting scissors that i was using there so they're a bit stuck up with all sorts Okay, so what we're then going to do is affix this at the back of our project. So I've just got a little bit of um, tape here, just normal, normal kind of sellotape. Just, what I tend to do is just, I'm a bit of a, I like to make sure I've got it central. So I tend to put a little fold like that in my card. Just get that nice and central. And then tape this into place there then we're going to pull that nice and tight and taut across the middle 
and then we'll put another bit of tape across here like so then we're going to do exactly the same on this side i'll just put my little marker in there so i know where i'm going you could always measure it if you wanted to Okay, so you can then see how you've got your your card crisscrossing round there. Okay, what we're then going to do is take a little bit of some very fine, that very fine white ribbon. And I literally just take that, tie it across the middle of my card. Like so, and pull it tight. And then can you see how it ruches the ribbon in at the middle there? So then when we put the bow on the top, it makes it look like we've actually tied the bow as opposed to just stuck it on. Okay, can you see that there? Okay, and what we're also going to do is we're going to create a tag using this fabulous happy birthday sentiment. So I'm going to pop that to one side. I've got a little bit of white card here. I'm going to give it a dust with my anti-static bag. And then again, we're going to ink our stamp up using a clear embossing ink pad. We're going to place that down onto our card and press. Lift that off. We just nearly dropped that there. Okay. And then we're going to grab in our metallic silver super fine embossing powder. I'm going to sprinkle that over the top like so it's going to go back into the jar and then we're going to heat this up not quite ink my stamping up there on the B never mind so all I'm doing is again just holding that heat gun still and then as soon as that embossing powder starts to melt and change, we're just going to move that heat gun over the image. And then we're going to trim this down. We've just trimmed that down ready to go onto our card so that'll then just tuck under there like so so you can see how this is all starting to come together nicely now so what i'm going to do next i'm going to take a little bit of crystallina glitter and i'm just going to add this onto the edge of my happy birthday there so to do that i'm going to take a chisel tip glue pen I've got buried somewhere on my desk. There it is. I'm going to whiz along the edge. Then you can see how that then gives that little glittery border. So what I've also done is I've put down a piece of white to matte and layer my uh, topper onto and another piece of the pink. So I'm going to just edge along this piece. So this is again the Rose Quartz Pearl card. I'm going to do is I'm going to grab in a card so just give me two seconds I'll just grab the card blank. 
Okay, so this layer is going to go down flat. So I'm going to use my dry clear glue just to stick this in place. go on your rubber card blank like so okay then I've got my piece of white so I've cut this a quarter of an inch bigger than my patterned piece there I'm going to put some foam pads just onto the back of here and that'll just give this a little bit of lift and dimension the backs of here one didn't seem to want to come off there <laughs> that one. So I'm just going to stick that down flat um, onto my card just going to grab a couple of more foam pads just to stick my next layer down so this is the one that we've stamped with our geometric background that is looking rather fabulous. So I'm going to stick these into place here, like so. Let's get rid of those. I'm going to take the backs off of our foam pads. this down on our card blank so you can decide which way around you want your background to be I'm gonna go like that there okay we've then got our gorgeous happy birthday that we're gonna stick on at a slight angle so this is gonna look like a tag on a parcel so we'll stick that on with a couple of foam pads You know what, actually, I'm just wondering if that might look a little bit too big. So, I'm thinking if I've got them to hand, give me two seconds, I'm going to go and grab a, one of the a little happy birthday sentiments because I think that might look better actually on this project. So, these are a little bit smaller. I didn't know with doing the background whether the happy birthday would stand out a bit more, but I actually think I might prefer to put one of these on. So, I'm going to save that for another project. We'll grab in one of these. We'll go for this one. I think. So, this one is May everything that may makes you happy be yours today and always, which I think is a lovely sentiment. I'm going to grab, I need some white card. It's got a bit of ink on the back, but that'll do fine. Okay, I'm going to take my anti-static bag. Give that a dust over. Ink power stamp again, clear embossing ink pad. Place that down and press. Take that off. Then we're going to use our metallic silver super fine again. Just sprinkle that over the top. Try and carefully get that back into the jar. There we go. Just quickly heat that up. Again, just using your heat gun. Okay. And then we want our smaller guillotine, which I've got down here. So we'll trim this down and what I'm going to do is trim it into like a bit of a tag shape. So we'll leave a little bit of a border. If we leave a longer piece there, then if we just take corner off there, corner off there, it's 
be a little bit more of a sloped angle, I think, to match. There we go. That's better. Okay, so what we'll then do is, again, we'll edge this with glitter. I'm going to take a little bit more just off the bottom there. Yeah, I'm terrible for this with sentiments. I start off with a great plan and then it ends up like a postage stamp. So again, we'll just use that crystallina glitter to edge round. So a little bit of glitter onto here. We're just going to work all the way around like so. Okay, I'm going to do a little double layer of foam pads just on the back. Do a double one there and then put a single one there. Then that'll just give it a little bit of a curve and a little bit of shape. Okay, so then we'll stick this onto our card like so. Then we're going to add our bow in at the top. So I'm going to use just a glue dot to stick this on. Place that down onto there, like so, and then I've got a bling stone that will pop into the middle of our lovely little bow. So then gonna go onto there. And then what you can do if you want to as well is you can always take some little jewels or crystals. I've got a pot with all of my jewels in here. And what works really well with this stamp is if you go in and where you've got the little joins, you just put little jewels on. It looks so, so pretty. I've done this on loads of the finished samples with this one as well. It looks really nice with pearls too, as well as jewels. But you can literally just go in and add these on. I'll try and finish the card to show you. But then when the light catches it, Oh, it looks so pretty when it's all nicely embossed. So you can just add these in. I mean, it's just crying out for a bit of bling, really, isn't it? <laughs> if you've got any of like the Cosmic Shimmer Pearl PVAs as well, of course, you could be using that. For this technique too. I'm terrible with those though. I always seem to put my finger in it just before it's dry. And I smudge my entire project. But never mind. <laughs> okay. So then you can see what a difference that then makes. So I would just work round. And I would do that on all of the little joints like so, just adding in all of these little jewels all the way around. And it does then make such a huge difference. Be able to show you in a second what half of the card looks like with them on. Then obviously halves without. Just quickly whack these on. There we go. But you can see how it's starting to look really pretty. This will look really nice for a wedding card as well, I think. If you did it all in kind of whites and ivories, it would look really, really pretty. There we go. You can see them just on half there now. And you can see what a difference that makes to the card. So all I would do is just continue on adding these in. We do sell these massive sheets of jewels on the website as well. So if, like me, you're a bit addicted to putting jewels on everything, these are incredible. Just stick these down. 
pop these all into place so you're just working your way around adding all of your little jewels onto here like so and you can just keep building this up and then we'll put another couple down here just do this little section at the top and we are just about finished then just going to add this in sticking these little jewels down like so just get these all nicely added on again it takes a little bit of time but trust me the end effect is completely and utterly worth it because your cards are going to look stunning. Just add the last couple in here there and one there. Add one there and a one there. And then if I turn that round, that would be your beautiful finished project and you can see by adding all of those jewels on there the gorgeous effect that then gives so i really hope that you've enjoyed this video if you have please make sure to subscribe to our channel you can also find us on facebook instagram and pinterest as chloe's creative cards and of course if you would like to shop any of the supplies that i've used today you can do so on the website chloe's creative cards .co uk i'll also put a link to the blog post that'll tell you all of the ingredients and any measurements that you need for this project and um yeah please do hop over and have a look we've got so many goodies on there so be sure to have a look thank you so much for joining me